Let me just go ahead and say I have a TBR. I don't know if I'll be following it. Books come in and then I might read them this week and my TBR changes just like that. This is just an Olivia Reads a Latte fangirl account at this point. I don't know. I just am not in the mood to read right now. We love that for me. back to my channel my name's Ashley I talk about books around here and today is the start of summer ween I don't know why I'm doing all this with my hands it's a lot we're gonna just put them down there so it is the start of summer ween I woke up this morning just in a good mood already because I am doing spooky things all week that's it that's all this is gonna be we're gonna be reading spooky books we're gonna be listening to spooky music we're gonna be watching spooky movies it's gonna be a spooky time. So if you've seen my TBR video, then you already know what I'm gonna be reading this week. I posted that a couple weeks ago. It's my TBR and other recommendations in case you were looking for spooky books in general to pick up for this. So here is my TBR currently beside of me. We'll see if I stick to it. I'm thinking that I wanna start with The Boatman's Daughter today for no reason, I just do. Um, and a surprise guest that has made it into this vlog. It's Midnight Sun. So I have been reading this. I am approximately halfway through. I've been reading this for weeks and here's why. I thought this was going to encapsulate the entire Twilight Saga. Is that bizarre of me to think that? I don't think so. It is huge. The first book, regular Twilight, is only like 300 pages. So if this is six to 700 pages, I was like, yeah, she's gonna have to write about all the books and like maybe she won't write as much as New Moon because he was gone. And I just, I had theories, I had thoughts. Even when I received the book, I flipped right open in the middle because I just wanted to check. And I swore that I was reading the scene. I just like skimmed. I really thought it was a scene where Edward is trying to expose himself so the Volturi will have him killed and Bella like runs and just like, I swear I was reading that. It wasn't because I'm reading halfway point now and that's not happening. Anyway, basically I found out this is just Twilight and so I slowed down reading it a lot because that was way less exciting to me, but I need to finish this bad boy. So I'm going to try to read, let me do some calculations real quick. I'm gonna try to read 50 pages of this every day and get it done. Cause I just, I just want it to be done at this point. So we're gonna do that. Today we're gonna start The Boatman's Daughter. This is supposed to be about a lot of supernaturally things happen. I think this is like a swamp town. I honestly don't have all the info, all the deets. I usually don't, but it says it's a supernatural cousin to Daniel Woodrell's gritty Ozarks thrillers, as if I know what that means. And uh, Slavic folklore, Southern Gothic, mystic imagination. Sounds like a good place to start. Additionally, I will be probably listening to spooky audiobooks on script while I work this week. So there's no telling what's gonna be in this vlog. There's no telling if I'll even commit to these books that I have on my TBR. Last time I did one of these, I made a whole TBR and I, I disrespected it. I did because I just read different books instead. So I'm gonna do my best to actually complete at least these four books and Midnight Sun, so five, but you know, don't, don't hold your breath because I also might surprise you and read other things. I've read nothing so far today, but I did just get some book mail. I've already opened it, so it's not technically an unboxing, but I can still show you what I got as my book mail because it fits this theme perfectly. So the first thing I got was a book, These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. And this is on my list because this was the Patreon Buddy Reads a Latte. It was Olivia's book club book pick for August. I don't know if it was just the Patreon or the Buddy Reads a Latte, TBH, but it was a book pick and I didn't read it yet, even though the lives already happened, but I wanna read it now. So see what I mean? Books come in and then I might read them this week and my TBR changes just like that. The second thing I have is not a book. It is a book sleeve. 
And this is from Happy Go Lovely Sleeves. Um, I will put their social information in the description so you can check them out if you want. But this is a spooky skeleton sleeve. I actually saw this because Olivia posted this on her Instagram story. So this is just an Olivia Read the Latte fangirl account at this point. This is so freaking cute and I don't have any book sleeves. This is my first one. I've really been wanting one and this was the perfect one to start with. It is like a bright orange on the inside and these skeletons glow in the dark. So this will definitely be making appearances throughout the rest of the week, especially for the prompt of reading a book in the dark which this is just gonna, it's just gonna work perfectly. So thank you past Ashley for timing this out for these things to arrive. I didn't even mean this to happen, but it did. And I'm not mad about it. So I have done nothing, uh, no reading. So I'm gonna have to listen to audiobook at work today to make up for lost time. So let's explore. I'm kind of interested in Robin Harding's stuff after reading the swap, because it's just kind of easy listens. They're more contemporary. Ooh, I'm also interested in The Girl from Widow Hills. That's a new Megan Miranda, even though I've never read Megan Miranda. I have another Robin Harding. Guess I'll try this one. Alrighty. Let's do a little reading update, shall we? So at this point, I might be able to just make one weekly vlog, TBH, because it's day two. It's almost five o'clock. I've read nothing so far. <laughs> I'm usually better than this, but today, this week, just generally not going great. I have started The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda on audiobook. I've been listening to that today while I've been working and I just feel like it's the longest audiobook in the world. Like I don't feel like I've gotten anywhere in it. I'm pretty sure it's only nine hours in its total length which is right around the length that I usually listen to. Most audiobooks are around eight hours that I listen to and then I do them at two times two time speed so it usually only takes four hours to get through them. I've been listening to this one at two times speed and I feel like I have hardly made any progress in the story. It's about a girl who, when she was a little girl, she got swept up in a rainstorm and was missing for a couple days. And then her mom, I mean, I guess you don't really technically know all the details of what happened during that time yet, but basically her mom ended up writing a book about it and uh, blowing it into this fame thing of like the girl from Widow Hills who went missing for a few days in this rainstorm and ended up surviving. And then it's following her like 20 years later. So I guess stuff's supposed to start happening with people pursuing her or something. I honestly don't know what's happening. Her mom has died. That's kind of it. Nothing's really happened so far. I haven't heard the best things about Megan Miranda to be honest so I wasn't expecting that much and this was a new release that came out this year and I still like, I don't think I saw a single person put this book on bookstagram. So I wasn't expecting it to be great but I am hoping it picks up some. Other than that, I do need to start reading my actual TBR tonight. Here's what happened last night. Have you heard of the TV show Rain? It's extraordinary. It is one of my favorite shows of all time. Like top tier shows for me, Rain, True Blood, Fringe. Those are like superior god tier best TV shows that have ever existed for me. And I never finished watching Rain actually. I watched it when I was in college and then I just didn't never finish the last season. So I'm going back and watching them from the beginning. I started that last night and I watched like four episodes. So that's unusual for me. I usually just read all night and I read literally nothing. We love that for me. I will make sure I read something tonight. Um, I don't think it'll be this though. I don't know why I'm just like, I need to just give it a chance. I'm sure I'll like it. I don't know. I just, oh wait, is that an image? I don't know. I just, I'm not in the mood to read right now, which is a problem for a readathon. So, especially when you're vlogging it. I honestly might break the TBR again. Um, and, and try out these witches don't burn or something because that is YA and that might be just like easier to get into really quickly or I might just try final girls because I always fall into Riley Sager's books really quickly. Hopefully things pick up. <laughs> 
to make this clip a little more rewarding, I'll show you, oh my goodness, it's covered in dog hair, this book subscription box I just got from Books That Matter. I got it the other day, it comes from the UK, and this is a feminist book subscription service, and each month, they pick a different theme around feminism and send you a themed box on it. So this month's theme was, and this is the first time I've ever done this. I saw somebody post about it on Instagram and I was like, oh, it's cool, so I just gave it a try. This isn't something I've like done before. This isn't sponsored. This is literally just me trying something out. This month's theme was uh, feminism around the world or put her on the map is like what they were calling it. Oh, so <laughs> you're supposed to show people what you get in these boxes. So got a bookmark, um, a patch, of like a woman holding up the world, which is very Virgo energy that I am appreciating for this Virgo season. This artist is at betty.ratbag on Instagram. I'll put their information in the box uh, below if you wanna check them out. Also a sticker, a postcard of that same artist's drawing, and a cookie that came from at mandcake, M-A-N-D-H-C-A-K-E. So I'll put their information as well. I definitely want to eat this, but it was also just kind of cute because it's stamped and says women, women of the world. And I should eat it, but like also I kind of forgot about it to be honest. Um, and then the coolest thing that came in this box is this map. And can you see it all? Yeah. Okay. It's a map of feminists around the world so the countries are filled with the names of feminists from that part of the country which is beautiful it's also strangely sized and i don't know how i'm gonna hang it up but i'm gonna find a way because it's really cool and it came with this pamphlet that goes through and just talks about each person um and what they did so like for ireland or Croatia or Albania, all the places you can read information. And then the book was The Adventures of China Iron, which is translated by Fiona McIntosh and Iona McIntyre, originally written by Gabriella Cabazon Camara, if I said that correctly. Um, so this is a story about two women, I believe, exploring Argentina in 1872. It's just like a cultural celebration of Argentina from what I understand of the synopsis. And I think the theme was, it was like feminism around the world, but also like women in translation. And so there's a booklet that comes with this box. I don't know where it is right now, but there's a booklet that comes with the box and explains why the theme was selected. And specifically this book, this translated book was selected because women only make up a very, very small percentage of translators. And so they decided to celebrate women translators around the world. And that is why they chose this box and kind of, or this book and kind of put this whole box together. So super cool. I'll definitely be continuing with this book service. So you might see me show some unboxings in the future. I did an unboxing of this one on my Instagram. So you can also follow me on there if you want to keep up with like smaller day-to-day -day updates. Really pleased with this book box. It wasn't too expensive. I don't remember how much it was, but I remember not thinking it was astronomical for me to just like commit to purchase it without knowing anything about this service. But they are located in the UK, so it did take a little extra time for it to arrive. Um, but it did arrive in August, the month of the book box. So yeah, I'll definitely uh, at least do one more month of this and kind of show you guys what I get from it. On to the next clip where I am going to do some reading. If I say that, I have to, right? Right, so let's, let's go see what that looks like. Please look at this portrait of my dog. <laughs> and nice and spooky. Skelly boy. Skelly boy. All the spooky vibes for Summerween. <laughs> and a Virgo candle that smells all the good things. What up? 
let's give a quick reading update. I've decided that I am going to split these vlogs into parts one and two at least. So this will be the last day you see on this vlog. Uh, so it'll be Monday through Wednesday, and then the next vlogs will pick up on Thursday. I just finished The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda on audiobook. I flat out did not enjoy anything about it. I didn't think it was a good plot. I didn't care about any of the characters. I was not thrilled. There were too many characters introduced in the upfront that didn't matter. The ending was boring. The whole story was boring. I was bored. It was boring. So I gave that two stars. I really reserve one stars for like problematic books most of the time. Two stars is just like, eh, maybe someone likes it. I just didn't like anything about it. Hello, Cooper. So that's that on that. Other reading updates. I started The Boatman's Daughter by Andy Davidson last night. Sorry if you can hear Cooper. Sorry if you can hear my dog chewing his bone back there or that really loud vehicle that just drove by. So rude. Um, yeah, I started reading The Bowman's Daughter last night. I got 50 pages into it. I made myself read the first 50 pages and that alone was a struggle. I'm gonna DNF this. I don't DNF any. Can you take your bone over to the carpet maybe? Where it's more quiet? The writing style is not for me. It's really dense, it's really slow. I don't see myself being able to read this book and know what's going on because all I do is zone out. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Also Kat from Paperback Dreams just posted a video today of reading horror books with Larry, her dad, and this is one that he read and then he told her like, hey, you probably shouldn't bother because it's not that good. So that makes me feel better knowing other people felt this way. I also looked on Goodreads to see some reviews and the same kind of feelings I was having other people have had as well with this book. Some people really do love it. Sort of a general consensus that I've seen even for people who did like the book is that this would definitely make a better screenplay than a novel and the way it's written feels more cinematic than novelic if that's even a word but it's just not it for me guys. It kind of reminded me of American Gods by Neil Gaiman uh, which I also DNF'd. I read most of that book. I read like 75% and then I stopped reading it because I was just over it. But yeah, uh, not for me. Midnight Sun. I am right about halfway through. I read about 50 more pages. It is crazy like how long it takes me to get through this book. I feel like I sit and am reading for hours and I've gotten like 25 pages in. At this point, uh, I am gonna finish this book. I do, however, wish that it was never written. I'll have more to say about that when I'm done. Uh, but other piece of book news, I got some book mail today from HarperCollins. So they were kind enough to send me Lot 6 by David Ajmi. I believe that's how you say that name. It is a new memoir that just came out. So the author actually reached out to me on Instagram. I thought it was so nice and got uh, a copy sent over to me from the publisher. And actually they ended up sending two copies. So I'm gonna be hosting a giveaway over on my Instagram for one of these copies of this book. I'll probably wait until I read it and when I post my review, I'll host the giveaway as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're following on my Instagram and keep up with me so that you can have a chance to win one of these books. And that's about it. I at least have finished a book so far in this readathon. I'm proud of that. We're on Summerween day three and I finally finished one book. I don't have a plan going forward. It is my birthday week. So I have birthday events going on uh, tonight and Friday and Saturday <laughs> with separate people. It's all safe and socially distanced, um, but I'm just having a friend over tonight and another friend on Friday. And then my mom is coming this weekend. So going to be busy times, not much reading will be done. This is my most unsuccessful readathon so far, and it was the one I was the most excited about, so that's not going great. But the good news is, hello Cooper. The good news is I do have many unread books on my TBR that are thrillers or horrors to choose from instead. So I think next I'll probably try Final Girls by Riley Sager. And I really feel like that one just can't let me down, right? I mean, I feel like 
there's hope for that. So I'm probably gonna end the vlog here, this part one. If you guys have any suggestions for me of better books I can be reading, LMK. I have Scribd, so anything that's on Scribd I can listen to. And let me show you a couple books on my TBR. I grabbed four books. So obviously I have These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. I showed this earlier in an unboxing. So this is an option, it's a YA. Uh, about witches. <laughs> I have My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I just read He Started It, which is Samantha Downing's sophomore novel that just came out, I think last month, and it was phenomenal, five stars. So I immediately got this one. So this could be a good one to read. I have Mother, Daughter, Widow, Wife by Robin Wasserman. I have never read anything from this author, but this was a new release. And honestly, it was the cover for me. That's what did it. So um, I, I don't know if this is the safest option because I know nothing about this author and if it would be good. And then I have Wonderland. Um, I'm not sure how to say this author's name, but this is the same author of Baby Teeth, which I know a lot of people disliked. I, I don't even know if I would be interested in this book either, but I got it because I just feel like it's going to be on the top 10 list of horror books for Goodreads at the end of the year when they do their awards. And I like to be informed on what I'm voting on. Um, so this was also a pick of mine. It's like a uh, creepy forest things going on, which could be interesting. So let me know which of these or any other recommendations, anything on script, honestly, anything at this point, I would be willing <laughs> to branch out and try. In the meantime, I'm going to start Final Girls and hope that, hope that things pick up from here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you stay tuned for parts two and potentially part three of this video series. If I do that many, we'll see. Um, but I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.